So this week, um, our conceptual questions this week is quite different in format. It's uh, basically drawing free body diagrams. <laughs> and for the 11 examples of free body diagrams you have here, I've already drawn the diagrams. So um, you will see my version of the diagram on the uh, solution for this week's um, uh, conceptual questions. So if you get to, uh, so if you, once you unlock through week five, peer review for free body diagrams, you will see my answers there. So I won't do the exact situations that are here. So let me just pull this off to the side so that I have this available for me to look at to see if I've done that before. And with that, I'm just going to go to the uh, textbook section and, um, and just um, um, look for uh, situations that involve forces where I could maybe draw a free body diagram. And um, I will spend the next 10 minutes or so just doing that. Okay, so uh, let me do this out of chapter five. So I'm just gonna start out with a conceptual question. I'm just looking for basically situations that involve forces where <laughs> free body diagram might be helpful. Uh, you know what, let me do it this way. I think that um, being on side so far, it's kind of hard for me to see. So I'll just uh, have this here. And I actually have textbook number reference. So it's relatively quick for me to. I think uh, for most of these questions, yeah, I didn't pick out any questions that didn't have a diagram. So I think what I should be looking for are situations that have a word description, but no diagram. So let me just uh, scroll through here. I'd probably have enough time to draw three body diagrams for two or three situations, I think. Oh, this is an interesting situation. So let me draw a free body diagram here. The situation is described as uh, someone was transporting a box of cupcakes. Okay, um, so I have a box of cupcakes. The car in front of her stops suddenly. She applied brake Im immediately. She was wearing her seatbelt. That's our no physical. Okay, okay. Um, so I guess the easiest thing for me to do is imagine this box of cupcakes resting on the seat. This is the seat of the car um, and you know the larger car I'm not quite drawing. So initially the, this whole thing is moving with some velocity and at some point suddenly she has to stop, she applies the brake and the car stops. So that means that there's uh, some um, that, that means that there's some backward acceleration. I think, yeah, so that <laughs> initial velocity comes to uh, final velocity of zero. Okay, I think I've dem uh, drawn them enough. Okay, and the thing that's tricky in this situation is when you're trying to describe what is happening to this box, um, intuitively, you want to describe some kind of a forward force. Because what you see in the car is that you have the box that was sitting here and it flies off to the front to uh, become smoosh cakes. So you want, as you are trying to draw a free body diagram for this situation, it's quite natural and understandable to want to say if this is the box of cupcakes, that there is some kind of a forward applied force. And this is the training that you are going through. Training meaning uh, training being um, learning to identify real forces correctly and only the real forces correctly and <laughs> try to uh, and learn to dismiss uh, forces that are not really there, the fictitious forces. So in this situation, if I am asked to draw a free body diagram of the box, this is the thought process that I need to go through. Uh, I need to go through, okay, um, what forces must be on the box? Um, I know there must be gravity on the box. Box is, you know, it's Earth. So and I like to get into the habit of always drawing gravity. Um, so there's 
potentially graft well there's gravity on the box <laughs> and and the practice i like to go through is this practice meaning um is this practice of drawing forces as it becomes necessary for me to draw them so as i draw this force on the box if i have a net downward force the box must be accelerating downward and that's not the description of acceleration of the box I have. It's not accelerating vertically. So vertically forces must balance out, which means there must be another force that balances out gravity. That's what we call normal force, uh, support force from the seat. Okay, so the box is not accelerating vertically. And at this point, I ask the question, um, did I draw all the forces that I need to draw? And this is the uh, this is the point at which some people might be tempted to draw a forward force. And this is and here's the situation you need to justify drawing a forward force. In order for you to identify a forward force, you must have a forward acceleration, or you must have some other backward force that um, somehow balances out the forward force so that the net force can go in either direction. And it's in this situation where it's important that I identified what the direction of acceleration was. The entire car is undergoing backward acceleration. So the contents of the car are also undergoing backward acceleration. So for this situation for forward acceleration that you might want, you don't have that. If anything, you have a backward acceleration. That would be if the car stayed in the seat. And, um, and so, you know, if you think through, through this situation for quite some amount of time, you might think, hey, shouldn't there be friction force on the box? And yeah, there can be friction force on the box. And that friction force will be pointed backward in order to account for any backward acceleration that the box might experience. <laughs> so you might ask, how does this box uh, smash to the front of the car then? Um, and that's where you have to convince yourself of the truth of this statement. The box, it doesn't accelerate forward. To the extent that there's any acceleration, it has to be backward because any force that can be on the box is pointing backward. So this situation here, it's best described as the car accelerating backward. And in the situation where a box flies forward and smashes to the front of the car, it's that box is not accelerating backward as much as the car is. So, um, so the box doesn't actually, it doesn't fly forward. Um, at least if you are imagining looking at this from an inertial frame of reference, if a passerby is looking at this box, if anything, this box might be slowing down a little bit, but it's not moving any more forward than it was before the, before the brakes were applied. And it, it, because this goes against your intuitive feel for a situation like this, it takes time and effort to think through this carefully and drawing free body diagram for this can be tricky. Um, but when you've drawn correct free body diagram, you'll have drawn something that looks like this, where there's a, maybe a backward force that could be pulling the box back a little bit, but at no point you should be identifying a forward force because there's nothing in the setup that could be exerting a forward force. So oh. let me draw this one, be mainly because it's a question I um, like to ask in my physics 10 class, and there are surprising number of forces. So the question is talk about the free body diagram of the book, which is fine, but let me draw the free body diagram of the table and earth as well. It's, uh, um, it's one of those questions where uh, <laughs> there's surprisingly a lot involved. So. Um, it asks if the 
if a book is located on a table, how many forces should be shown in a free body diagram of the book? Okay, I guess only two. <laughs> it's not that many. So let me give you a more um, complete description of the situation. So if a book is on a table, okay, so I have a table. And I have a book on top of it. Well, the table isn't floating out in space. It must be resting on something. It must be resting on Earth. So this is a potentially a system of three objects, book, table, and earth. And this uh, gives you lots of interesting things to uh, consider. So, uh, so let me draw the forces on the book. And I will uh, walk through the considerations I go through as I draw free body diagrams. So uh, let me start out with a free body diagram of book. And when I draw free body diagram, as I was saying, I like to draw only the forces that are necessary. And especially for objects on Earth, a good starting place is gravity, because you are always going to have gravity, as long as you are talking about either things on Earth, or even in orbit around the Earth, gravity is not gone, so you will still have gravity. So gravity is the force I like to start with. And drawing gravity allows me to ask this question. Did I draw all the forces necessary for this setup? And um, for this setup, one thing I do know is that acceleration is zero. So if gravity is the only force that doesn't work, I must have another force on the book that's going to be balancing out the pull of gravity down. So there must be some upward force this is what we call normal force, or sometimes support force. But I'll stick with the normal force for most of this class. And with these two forces, the net force on the book can be balanced out to have zero acceleration. So good, okay, I'm done with the free body diagram of the book. And uh, let me draw a free body diagram of the table. Um, so I have table. And I will represent it with a dot again, because it doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. So with the table, um, it's also going, there's also going to be a gravitational pull on the table. So there will be a gravitational force pulling it down. Um, oh, I got multiple different forces that I'm referring to as gravity. Let me relabel them so that I don't potentially confuse myself. I'm going to call this W1, or sorry, W book weight of the book, and let me call this uh, WT, weight of the table. And a uh, table is not accelerating downward either. So there must be another force that's balancing it. Um, there should be upward normal force. Um, and this would be the support force from the Earth. And oh, I'm labeling two different normal forces. So let me call this N1, let me call this N2, okay. Now I'll tell you that I'm missing a force. I'll come back and get that missing force in a bit. <laughs> but for now, let me just note that uh, this uh, free body diagram is missing a force. Uh, but at the moment, going by the criteria that I laid out, acceleration being zero, you could easily convince yourself that this is all the forces you need to consider, maybe. Let me draw a free body diagram of the Earth and I'll wrap it up. So free body diagram of Earth. I guess an easy mistake to make for an Earth is to say, hmm, Earth is not pulling itself down, so I don't need to draw gravity for Earth. So I could say, oh, I'm done. I don't need to do anything else. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and, and this would, you know, this diagram would be consistent with the zero acceleration. And this is the place where I would, uh, um, I, I introduced the idea of Newton's third law check. It allows you to identify potentially the, identify the internal forces that you could have easily missed when you are first considering your forces on your objects in your system. And remember what Newton's third law says, if you have a force on object A by B, then um, there's a reaction force 
on B by A that equally magnitude and opposite in direction. And I'm drawing these arrows to remind you forces are vectors and the direction matters. So whenever you have both of the interacting objects in your system, you must have those pairs, pairs of forces. And here I define a very large system. So all the forces are internal forces. All the forces there are action reaction force pairs. So for example, on the book, I drew this weight on the book. I need to identify a matching reaction force. Uh, it's not going to be on the book. It's the force on book. So you need to identify what object is exerting that force. And if it's weight or gravity, it's earth that's exerting that force. So there must be a reaction force on earth. The book is pulling the earth up by the same amount of force. Now, the earth doesn't noticeably accelerate upward because of the book, because it's a lot more massive. But in terms of the diagram, there has to be equal and opposite force on earth. Uh, I have this normal force on book, N1, um, and, and I don't have any other... Now, there are equal and opposite forces, but don't get confused by that phrasing, equal and opposite. Even though this force is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, it's not Newton's third law pair. Because um, you, it, Newton's third law pairs have to be on two different bodies. It's a law of interaction. It describes interaction. These two forces are forces on the same body. So as I'm looking at this normal force, I'm asking myself, what object is exerting the normal force? And the book is resting on the table. So it's the table that's exerting that normal force. So there must be a reaction force pair to that force. So that's going to be downward normal force on table of magnitude N1. And I hope it, if you think of this through, it makes a sense that when you consider the table, and when you consider the table with the book on top of it and without the book on top, when the book is on top of the table, there's something pushing down on the table. And the, this is the force that's pushing down on the table. Newton's third law uh, gives you that nicely. Uh, similar deal with uh, this normal force on table, you need to think through what is that force by? It's by Earth. So there must be downward um, normal force on Earth by the table. So these are the Newton's third law pairs. And, oh, I think I have one missing one, the weight of the table. It's the earth pulling the table down. So the table must be pulling the earth up. So that's my fourth <laughs> Newton's third law of pairs. And um, so for this entire system, there should be eight forces, four pairs. <laughs> and uh, identifying all of it, it, um, it, it so it, so I, being able to identify all of them correctly without any missing forces or without any extraneous forces, um, once you can do that, I think that's a mark of um, you're having understood Newton's laws, especially Newton's third law correctly. So um, I would ask you to give that a try and, or you know, come up with a similar situation and see if you can reason through it with all the um, potentially complicated forces that may be involved in all the interactions.